In this section, you'll learn about ACLs, Access Control Lists. What an ACL does is it identifies traffic that's going through the router and the router can then take an action based on that. The kind of things that it will look at to identify the traffic is source and destination, IP addresses or port numbers. And what ACLs have traditionally been used for is for securing traffic going through the router. For example, let's say that we have got the sales IP subnet 10.10.10.0 and they're in VLAN 10. And we've got the accounts subnet and VLAN, they're 10.10.20.0 and VLAN 20. And there's no need for the sales PCs to be sending traffic to accounts. In fact, we're worried that if that traffic was allowed, then maybe it could cause issues. It's a security concern. So we can segment the two sets of users at layer two with our VLANs. They're already segmented at layer three by the IP subnets, but by default, a router will route traffic between subnets that it knows about. If you want to block traffic between subnets at layer three and also looking at layer four information, you can use an ACL for that. So in that example, we would use the ACL to block traffic from the 10.10.10.0 subnet to the 10.10.20.0 subnet. So that's the main thing what we usually do with ACLs, but they're not just used for securing traffic going through the router. Whenever we've got any kind of software policy where we want to identify traffic and then take an action based on that, ACLs are one of the most common ways to do that. For example, let's say we want to configure a quality of service policy. Let's say that we want to give our voice traffic coming from our IP phones preferential treatment going through the router. Well, we can look at the traffic coming from our IP phones and we can then identify that based on an ACL and then use that in our QoS policy. Or maybe we need to translate private IP addresses on the inside to public IP addresses on the outside with a NAT rule, network address translation. Again, we can use an ACL to specify the source IP addresses of those private hosts on the inside. So those are the things that you can do with an ACL. In this section, we're gonna be primarily looking at it from the point of view of security, securing traffic going through the router. But we will look at QoS and network address translation in later sections as well. Okay, so let's walk through how we're going to break it down in this section. We've got an ACL overview to start with, and then I'll explain the different types of ACLs, which are standard, extended, and named. I'll walk through the ACL syntax. There's nothing too complicated about it, but the command is quite long. So we'll break it down step by step. We'll go through each of the different keywords that make up the command. Then I'll talk about the ACL operations. There's a few things about ACLs that are not actually that intuitive. And if you don't understand how they work, it can really confuse you. It can be difficult to understand what's going on with the router because there's a few gotchas with ACLs. So I'll explain what they are later on in the section. Okay, so access control lists, let's get started.